Okay, you know, the first two lectures, uh, we were talking about life in the north. Well, the next two, we're going to talk about life in the south. So 14.3 is called the Cotton Kingdom in the South. Okay, as you know, you know, those um, new, and the Industrial Revolution, you know, changed the way we manufactured things. And it started with the textile mills, as we've already studied. And they, it really increases the demand for cotton, southern cotton, okay? The problem was... You know, they could grow cotton, they could grow all the cotton they wanted, but the problem was inside the cotton ball were bunches of little seeds. You see all these little things right here? It's seeds. So what happens is, you know, people would pick the cotton and then they'd have to comb the cotton. They'd get these two combs on their hands, kind of looks like horse brushes, and they'd have to comb the cotton back and forth trying to take out all these little seeds. So honestly, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, it's, it's a very slow, tedious process. And it's just not efficient. So, um, you know, it's just not working out so well. Now, Eli Whitney, Eli Whitney was a teacher. Eli Whitney has, was working in the South, you know, as a tutor. And he saw what was going on. And he saw these poor slaves having to comb out this cotton. And he goes, you know, there's got to be an easier way. There's got to be an easier way. So Eli Whitney went to work to create the cotton engine, which we now call the cotton gin, all right? And what it is was kind of a box with uh, two wheels, and it had on these wheels combs or little teeth sticking out of it. And you would turn a crank, and these wheels, you dump the cotton in, and these wheels with the teeth would comb out all the cotton. So this greatly decreases the amount of time that somebody would have to comb out the cotton. In fact, the text sa says that uh, uh, the cotton gin can do like uh, a single day what it would take 50 workers to do normally. Now, Eli Whitney is actually trying to help the slaves, you know, like, hey, you know, that's a lot of work, you know, if we could make it, uh, something, make it a little bit easier on them. Well, unfortunately, this is going to make it worse. Why? Because now they can produce even more cotton. Now that they have the cotton gin, easier to clean the seeds, there's going to be a bigger demand for cotton, more fields are going to be planted with cotton, which means they need more uh, slaves to plant and pick the cotton. So this is going to have a huge effect, though, on the southern economy. Uh, South is going to make a lot of money, unfortunately, on the backs of these slaves, slave labor. Now, check this out. The cotton kingdom grew. 1792, you know, right when we're getting ready to invent the cotton gin, 6,000 bales a year was what they could grow. By 1850, though, 2 million bales a year. Bales are really big, by the way, too. But with that, so did slavery. Now, if you remember all the way back to the Constitutional Convention, remember the Three-Fifths Compromise. Three-Fifths Compromise, there was a second part of it. We all know that the slaves are going to count as three-fifths of the population as far as representation. But the second part was that, you know, the slave, you know, they're not going to outlaw the importation of slaves for 20 years. But that's going to end. But after, you know, the mid, you know, 18... 1805, 1807, 1810, it was actually 1809, what's going to happen is the demand for slaves is still going to go up, but you can't bring any more in. Where's the slaves going to come from? And that's where, unfortunately, you're going to see that slaves are going to be traded like a commodity, almost tra raised like a, like a beast of burden, and sold. Families are going to be broken up. Children will be taken away from parents. Dads will be taken away from the family. Um... And this is a very tragic time because, remember, we can't bring any more slaves from Africa, so they end up almost raising slaves and selling them. All right, so this is an excellent representation of what was going on. All right, so here's thousands of bales of cotton right here. Here are the years from 1800 to 1860. These are the amount of slaves. So... In thousands, so there's 500,000 slaves in 1800. And then look, direct correlation between the amount of cotton that's grown right up here and the amount of slaves that they need. So as more cotton is being produced, more slaves are needed. These slaves aren't used to comb the cotton anymore. No, they are used to plant and harvest, you know, weed, all the things that you need to do to grow cotton. All right.
Now let's look at this. Now cotton, again, is the most profitable cash crop. It is so profitable, they don't even bother setting up, uh, you know, factories or textiles. It's They make more money just growing the cotton. They make more money than if they used to put industry in the South. In fact, cotton is, if you know anything about cotton, cotton takes a lot of uh, nitrate out of the soil. So, um, you know, one year they grow some, you know, great cotton harvest. And they go, oh, next year's even going to be better. The next year is not so good. Third year is like, man, what's going on? Fourth year is like nothing. Because they don't rotate crops. It's not profitable for them to replace the cotton the following year with soybeans or whatever it might be. What they do instead is they just buy more land. All right? That field burns out. Well, they just move west. Buy more land. Plant the cotton. Make a huge amount of profit. Expand their holdings. Buy more land. Buy more slaves. Burn out the field. Move west. Buy a bigger, you know, with the profit, they buy even more land. And they buy more slaves. Right? Plant that land, produces a large amount of profit for them. The land's burned out. They move west, buy more land, even more. In this cycle keeps repeating, repeating. And these large plantation owners are making a huge amount of money. Okay? All right, large plantations. But cotton can't be grown everywhere in the south. It's mostly in the southern parts of the states, you know, South Carolina, Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Texas. All right? Other big plantations are rice in South Carolina, Georgia, and sugar cane. Okay? These are very expensive to grow, and small farmers can't do this. You know, you can't have five acres of rice. You know, by the time you harvested and did all the work for five acres, you might get, what, 15 bags of rice? Well, that's obviously not enough. You need hundreds and hundreds of acres of rice, and you need hundreds of acres of sugar cane, right? So the small farmer can't get into these. It's just, you know, much, you need too much land. So cotton, rice, and sugar cane, those are going to be the big three as far as these large plantations with, you know, hundreds of slaves working on them, all right? Where you're going to see a lot of the small farmers are going to be tobacco. Tobacco used to be grown on large plantations in Virginia, you remember all the way back, you know, tobacco saved, uh, you know, Jamestown. But now what they do is uh, this kind of moves to the smaller farmer because the large plantation owners are making more money on cotton, rice, and sugar cane. So they give up planting tobacco, and that's going to fall to the small farmers. Where they're using maybe, I don't know, 5, 10, 15, 20 acres, where they maybe have 5, 6, 8, 10 slaves possibly, field hands to, to work that field. All right? Also in the South, most of the livestock in the nation is being grown in the South. Uh, hogs, mules, cattle. Most of this is happening in the South. And as you probably well know, horses. Horse breeding is huge in Kentucky. Even today, Kentucky Derby is still world-renowned. So uh, even though cotton is you know, the predominant cash crop, it's the largest um, uh, export for the South. There are some other things that is going on in the South. Now the South did have some successful industry, but they remain predominantly agriculture. And again, like I was saying before, they're going to invest their money in land and slaves. They are making so much money on this that they don't want to be bothered with industry. You know, they, again, you know, each year they... They sell their cotton at a huge profit. They buy more land, which means they need more slaves. They sell that at even a larger profit, and they just the cycle keeps repeating. All right? Now, because of this, almost everything is either imported from Europe or from the north. They don't hardly make anything. Right? So every shovel, every plow, uh, most of their clothes... Clocks, guns, all the stuff that, you know, really uh, they need is coming from the North. And some people come ver become very resentful of the North. But most people in the South love how they do things. They love it. And they're very proud of their cotton kingdom. And as you're going to find out later on, this lack of industry in the South is really going to affect them during the Civil War. All right. Well, there you have it. 
that was going on in the South as far as industry.